Warm Bill. I'd like to welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar where we'll be looking at VPME with Sam, Application Specialist here at Warm Bill. Just to inform you, the delegate audio will be muted during the presentations to facilitate flow and keep to time. If you have questions during the presentations, please type into the GoToMeeting question facility on the right hand side of your screen and we will collate the questions and answer them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend. I will now pass you over to Sam. Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Sam Severinser. Um, I've been with Hornbill for about nine years as developer and consultant, um, for those who don't know me yet. Um, let me just quickly come up with a preamble for the VPME um, discussion today. This is not VPME training uh, because VPME allows you into the internals of SupportWorks and thereby you could potentially break things. So um, some training is required. The skills that would be required in order for, uh, for you to follow the VPME training would be um, some basic SQL skills, some basic programming skills, uh, seriously basic uh, programming knowledge, just uh, what a variable is, and some admin, preferably um, admin knowledge of support works as well. Um, so without any further ado, uh, VPME, what is it? Uh, it stands for Visual Process Management en Engine, uh, which is effectively a nice way of saying a server-side scripting. Um, it's a proprietary technology. Um, the visual part is predominantly the interface, which I will show you a little bit later on. Um, how we came about uh, bringing in this uh, VPME, um, previously it was uh, possible to manipulate SportWorks um, technologies by using predominantly PHP scripts. Um, we have replaced that with VPME, or technically we've put uh, allow VPME to be done um, as well. Um, VPME also helps us to use um, database triggers, as you are possibly aware, SportWorks and can handle multiple databases in the back end. Uh, however, each database technology brings with it the ability to do triggers or database triggers in a slightly different way. Um, and that's why with uh, VPME, we can actually do the database triggers within SportWorks as opposed to relying on or having to maintain three different database technologies. Um, so alongside PHP, XML, MC, and um, just directly working with the database, the VPME um, allows us a tool to modify support works and the workings um, on a somewhat specific level. So what does it do? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it does stuff on call actions. And what call actions could be, it could be within um, Support works when you're assigning a call to someone, when you're accepting a call, when you're updating a call, putting a call on hold, all those call actions we can actually manipulate and um, do more technology behind it. Um, another example for instance here is uh, on uh, business processes. Within the ITSM Enterprise template, um, you know you're aware hopefully of the uh, business process engine, all that is done using VPME. Also, one uh, which most people are aware with, are, are aware of, is within the autoresponder. If you've ever set up an autoresponder script, the script that you're selecting is a VPME script, which then allows you to, instant, for instance, update or log calls um, from an email. And another area where you will find VPME in use within ITSM is for some housekeeping. Uh, for instance, on web self-service, there's the idea that customers can be locked out um, for a period of time if they attempted to log in for three times in a row incorrectly. So there's a script running periodically that allows people to, or that unfreezes their lock. So an example um, to provide, uh, I'll provide you with is, for instance, here, when you update a call. So as far as you as an analyst are aware, when you're updating the call, you're talking to the SportWork server. You're saying update a call, the SportWork server actually updates the call then, and then it feeds back to say we've updated the call, it adds a call diary entry, and you'll see that visually on the screen. Now, VPME allows us two extra layers in here. So we can um, cut away before the call gets updated and do stuff, 
and once the call is updated, we can do stuff as well. So the stuff we can think of, for instance, when before the update, we can check whether all the data is correct. If it's not correct, we can actually block the call being updated. And once the call is updated, we can see what information is being put in and do something with that information. That something can range well, pretty much anything and everything. Because um, the things that VPME can do is anything that you as an analyst can do in support works with calls, VPME can do for you as well. So for instance, if you are updating a um, parent call, which has various tasks um, against it, you can make sure that within or using VPME that the children tasks get updated as well. Yeah, once a parent is updated. Um, or if given certain information, you can redirect a call by assigning a call. We can also use VPME to manipulate data. Uh, so, for instance, if you are um, creating a new organization, we can automatically um, add some extra default information for that organization in the database. Uh, we can use VPME to send emails, and we can also use it to trigger external resources. That could be an executable file, which will be server-side. Let me just um, emphasize that, or a web service, which effectively opens up a whole plethora of what PHP or any other technology can offer, which is basically the world. So there's one thing that I have to highlight is, of course, what can't VPME do? And one of the, a lot of uh, misconceptions is people think that VPME allows you to customize support works to the extent that you can actually do items or make um, some changes on the form. And VPME cannot do that. There is a little bit of form interaction which is pe uh, possible. Uh, for instance, if you, for in, uh, in the example I gave earlier on, if you're updating the call and you're blocking someone from updating the call, an error message can be returned, which will effectively say you've been unable to update the call. Uh, but something that you can't do, for instance, is um, in the example here, if you see a, um, a tick box on the form to say is a major incident, yes or no, tick that box and then um, see the words log major incident or have that populated instead. That cannot be done with VPME. And so it's specifically server-side technology. It runs on the server and not in the form or the interface for the analyst. So where can VPME be used? Um, as I mentioned before, there is um, within the autoresponder that the VPME is in use. I'll show you an example later on, uh, the default login call example. Um, within SLA triggers, if you ever wanted to do something special when a call gets um, escalated, uh, for instance, um, there is already a uh, possibility of changing an escalation arrow or um, changing um, the condition of a call, uh, but um, VPME allows you to do so many other things. Um, for instance, sending an email to the customer of the call to say your call has been escalated um, or to a manager. Um, as I said earlier on, within business processes, the business process is all worked through using uh, VPME. Um, you can use it also to augment uh, business processes. Within business processes, it is possible um, on a stage change or at the beginning of a stage to select various VPME scripts to run through. Um, and each of those scripts can do something, um, whatever it is you program it to do. And as we've seen a little bit earlier on, you can do a lot. You can manipulate data, um, perform other call actions, uh, send emails, etc. So as I mentioned earlier on, uh, VPME can be used to augment um, call actions. So when a call gets actioned in any way, shape, or form, uh, we can manipulate uh, how the system responds. Um, as mentioned earlier as well, it happily works as, data, as a database trigger. So when you update, um, update or insert or even delete something from the database using SportWorks, we can then fire off 
um, VPME script and do something according to that. So let's say, for instance, um, uh, you update a analyst to say that they are to not, not an analyst, a customer to say that they are currently on holiday. Um, you can then um, blank out their email address so they don't get emailed for a period of time. Um, and as I said, external triggers. It is possible to um, trigger a VPME script externally. Um, you can also use, uh, well, externally is basically from the command line. Um, so you can use the VPME script to do something on a uh, periodically, like the uh, lockout example I gave earlier on, uh, that is run in the Sportwork scheduler every X amount of minutes. Um, yeah, so that is effective. Uh, that is running the VPME script from a command line. So one example that I would want to um, work through is the analyst notifications. Um, as you are hopefully aware within uh, the ITSM Enterprise Suite, it is possible to um, send out an email when a call is assigned to either a group or an individual analyst. Uh, for that, the uh, service desk notification assign enabled needs to be set to true, which I have done in this area, so let me just confirm that. And the general settings, we have service desk, so that's currently enabled. And this sets the email templates for when we are assigning it to a group and when we're assigning it to a specific user. So that's functionality that will send or that will notify analysts to say that a call has been assigned to them individually or to their group. And within the VPME engine, you can find that over here on the left-hand side. Now, uh, let me just point out to you, um, this menu item, Manage VPME Processes, will, of course, only be there if you are licensed to use VPME. Um, otherwise, it will be grayed out. And over here on the left-hand side within the uh, VPME um, area, you have a section for all data dictionaries, and for each of the data dictionaries that exist, there will be its own set of VPME scripts. So what we're looking at here are the default scripts that are provided with um, ITSM Enterprise um, 762, to be very precise in this part. And what I'm looking for here is within the call action events, so when a call action has been done, in this case when a call is assigned, uh, to find out what is happening. So as you can see, there are quite a few scripts that make up ITSM Enterprise, quite daunting. Uh, these here at the bottom are the ones that are actually um, triggered by any of the call actions. And as you can already quickly see, you see on assign call. And please notice the wording here, it says on assign call. That's effectively before the call assignment happens. So something here is already done before we actually do anything. It sets some values and sets some action statuses. Um, that has to do with the um, notification to say whether it's already been seen by an analyst, yes or no, by the owning analyst. Um, on call assigned, which is the one that we're interested in, that's basically the one that happens after the system has actually assigned the call to a new um, uh, analyst or group. So within here you have various blocks and this is what we're looking at on this um, main part of the screen is the VPME script. So as you can see it has a start and eventually it ends on either an end OK or an end fail. And this is quite nice to walk through because you can somewhat see what things are doing because you can actually name each of these headings. So as you can see here, it says set activity, uh, which is the activity status that is then predominantly done by the add activity um, record. Then it checks whether it's assigned to a third party, yes or not. So there's all these logical things that can be done uh, with the data so you can effectively program. Uh, if it's being assigned to a third party, we 
get the supplier information in order to send out an email to the supplier to say a call has been assigned to them. Uh, if it's not a supplier, so effectively it's being assigned to an actual analyst or a group, what's going to happen? It's going to go to assign call email. And that's a separate script that deals with the email sending for that particular call assignment. So that particular script lives under here. And this is pretty much the script as you get it. Um, in order to make things a little bit easier for everyone and not to see all these lists or reams of um, scripts, I've separated it out. Uh, there we go. And this is the script that does the functionality of sending or sending an email to an analyst. So let's first have a look at that functionality itself. Within the service desk here, I have in the docs, um, I've assigned or I've got one call, which is currently, okay, unassigned, but it's assigned to the docs. If I assign this call to, for instance, um, Tweedledee, yeah, all of the call happily went out of here, and Tweedledee will find it in his queue. Yeah, still not accepted, uh, but that's beside the point. Nice thing is, within the email, sent items, we will see that email has just been sent to Tweedledee, that a call, specifically call 29, has been assigned to him, which he can then go in and update and check out within SportWorks. Yeah, and as you can see, the timing, that's the one that was sent just a moment ago. Um, furthermore, there's also an action, if I assign it away from Tweedledee back to the docs, as in it's going to a group, it will send it to both the carpenter and the walrus. So if I check the emails, sent items, as you can see, both walrus and carpenter have received an email to see uh, to say that a call has been assigned to their group. All that sending is done in this script. The first thing that's happening in this area is it's going to check, and that's done on this side, and this is going to be a little bit technical. Um, this basically checks whether the current analyst, i.e. the analyst performing the action, is the person that the call, that the call is assigned to. Yeah? So if I'm assigning it to myself, um, then it will actually follow this no answer here. It's, there's an inequality here. Um, and it will just end. So basically if I'm assigning it to myself, I don't need to receive an email because I know I'm assigning it to myself. So that's the first thing. However, if that's not the case, and it's therefore assigned to someone else or a group, then we're going to have a look whether we actually need to do this notification thing. And within here, and I didn't tidy this one up, I realized, there's some SQL query which gets the information. Now notice that service desk .notification .assign. Yeah, It effectively checks whether the value set within here uh, that's because that one is open, my apologies. It checks whether this has been set to true. If it's not set to true, yeah, or something else ha occurred that didn't allow it to run that query, we'll just end because we don't need to worry about it. No one wanted the um, call to be, or the email to be sent out. However, if we do want the email to be sent out, if it was set to true, we'll follow the remainder of the script and we're basically following this arrow. So this is going to get some information about the call and as you can see, this is effectively grabbing the first diary entry for that particular call. That gets then populated in some variables which we'll use later on in order to send it in the email. And the nice thing, as I said earlier on, we can pretty much see what's happening by just reading what's on each and every one of these blocks. So for instance, here it gets latest diary entries, we'll get the last diary entry. Yeah. Um, again, um, 
this is grabbing the last diary entry. It sets the information for that, and then finally it grabs customer information. Yeah, this is where we load the customer, so all the customer information gets loaded in. Then we populate the email templates. Now, as you're probably familiar with email templates within SupportWorks, whenever you do a call action, the remote query information is being used. This is separate from the remote query, um, so all the variables effectively need to be ha added by hand within here. And this is where, for instance, if you're playing around with a business process um, and a variable doesn't show up, this is where effectively it needs to be added. And it's just an extra line on the list. So you can see that there will be email variables added. There's a subgroup one. I mean, most of these match the same names as in the remote query, um, which populates the information with the subgroup information for the call that's been assigned to, or the group, uh, yeah, the group that the call is being assigned to. There's some other information that gets filled in, including who the customer is. And all those items can be used in the email. Um, then that was effectively a preamble to get everything ready, because we know that the email is going to be sent. We just don't know yet to whom. So at this particular point, we're going to find out to whom we're going to send the email. Now, when a call is assigned to SupportWorks, there are two field, uh, fields that are in, of interest. There's the subgroup field, which contains the group that it's being assigned to, and the owner. And if the owner is blank, then it's be, the call has been assigned to a group. If the owner is filled in, of course, the call was assigned to that particular um, analyst. So that's what this currently is checking. If um, the owner is not blank, yeah, then we know that there is an owner, so a specific a new analyst that the call has been assigned to. So we go follow this path. If it was blank and therefore it's been assigned to a group, we follow the second path. So I'll work through both um, both paths. Uh, paths. This grabs information uh, that has been set within here for which mailbox to use. And as I said, this is for the analyst one, so it will grab the assigned user as opposed to the assigned group email templates or mailbox information. As you can see here, that is servicedesk.notification.assignuser.mailbox, which is different from this one over here, which does it for the assigned group. This one grabs the email template, again for the assigned user specific one. And then finally, we grab the analyst details. So as you can see here, this is grabbing information, specifically the contact E field, which is where the email address is stored, from where the analyst information is stored, specifically, of course, where we're looking for that particular analyst whom we're assigning the call to. And this over here is basically say if that person at least has an email address. If the analyst doesn't have an email address set, we don't need to do anything. So if we get any results, if anything, it should effectively be one, we're going to send an email. And that's it. If there are no results, if the person didn't have an email address or a person analyst doesn't exist, which would be quite weird, we'll go in into an end OK and the process has ended. So very similar happens on this side. What we see over here is we grab the mailbox and the email template information. Again, that's just to confirm which email template is going to be used and uh, for sending out the email. And then we're going to get the analyst details, basically of all the analysts that are within that group. So again, we check whether they actually have an email address, because again, if we, the analyst doesn't have an email address, we don't need to send an email. And what we're linking it to is an extra table called SW Analyst Groups, which is the table which stores um, which groups an analyst is a member of, because an analyst is allowed to be a member of multiple groups. Now, depending on requirements, this can be tweaked, for instance, to say um, only where their home group is a only uh, for the people whose home group it is, yeah, in which case the SQL query would be a little bit easier. Um, some people don't want that or want to say all their subgroups as well. So for instance, if a call is assigned to um, 
uh, if a call is assigned to, for instance, here the support group, do you, the way it's currently written, um, only the administrator would be getting an email. However, if um, some people might want that Tweedledee and Tweedledum, because they're effectively members of a subgroup of the general support group, would also get an email. If that is the case, one would need to manipulate this particular query here and play around with a like clause in there. So this all allows you to manipulate what information you're extracting from the system and then do things with it, for instance, sending an email. Yeah, what you see over here, by the way, on each record found, it actually is going to check whether the analyst performing the action is the analyst that's in that group. So there could be multiple people in the group. We've already checked over here that the analyst performing the action um, uh, is not being need needlessly sent an email, but this one over here specifically is if the call is assigned to that particular analyst. In the slightly more general case where the call is assigned to a group, of course there's no analyst against the call, the analyst, if he happens to be a member of the group that he's assigning the call to, this over here prevents him from getting an email. Yes, so that's where this comes in. It basically checks whether the analyst performing the action is the analyst that is resulting from this query over here. Yeah, as opposed to here where the analyst performing the action is compared against the analyst receiving the call. So that is how VPME works and what we as a programmers are looking at pretty much on a daily basis. Um, I mentioned earlier on that I very quickly um, would also show you um, how calls are being logged in ITSM. I'll grab the foundations one though. So if you've set up an autoresponder, um, let me show you on this side, you would have had a log new call. You can select your script, and if I I'll grab this particular script, never mind. Um, as you can see from here, oops, sorry, just get both in. This list of items here are the same list of parameters that you've got set up here, and that's one way of getting information into a VPME script, it's specifically here from an email, but it is also possible to populate these parameters, which are then used in the VPME script by using the command line. Um, these parameters being set by the email or information obtained through the OS responder would reach this VPME script in this case. This is the log new call VPME script. The first thing that it tries to do is actually log the call, filling in pieces of information and this ampersand square bracket you would have seen in various places that grabs information that are held in variables within the system. So, uh, when you're logging the call, that could either work or it doesn't work. It is as simple as that. If it works, we're going to send out an email, uh, or in this case, we're going to attach the email to the call, and that basically does that particular thing. This checks whether um, that item here is set yes or no. Um, so, if you want to attach it to the email, then this comes into play. If you don't want to, we go straight to update call values, which tidies up some of the uh, call logging information, filling some information in. And if that's all successful, an email gets sent out to effectively acknowledge, say, that the call has been logged. Um, if it somehow failed to log the call, we get the rejected email templates being sent out. So that's how the log call um, email or autoresponder VPME script works in general. Um, that's our the examples. The main um, item, of course, is um, that all this information can also be found through the help menu in SportWorks. Um, that will probably direct you nowadays to community.hornbill.com where all the information for what's possible within VPME as well as all the other technologies that I've very briefly mentioned um, and how to interact with SportWorks. Uh, you can also, of course, a good resource um, is go to the forums. A lot of customers like yourselves 
um, have helped pe other customers out as well as um, sometimes got directions from us um, with queries regarding VPME. And I believe at this point it is time to let the floor or give the floor to you if you've got any specific questions. Do we have anyone with questions? Thank you, Sam. Just to remind everybody, if you do have a question, use the question facility on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will um, collate them and start answering them. I realise I might have um, gone through this at a relatively rapid pace. Um, if there is any clarification uh, that you wish, then by all means let me know. Had a, a question come through in the demo. What was the um, base of the data? The base of the data. Um, the demo that I've. Uh, let me just get the script here. Um, within Sportworks, there are, as you're probably aware, um, various databases at hand. There's predominantly the cache database and the main database. Um, first and foremost, in this case, we're talking only in, um, to the Sportworks SQL database. Uh, but depending on um, where you're grabbing the information from, a separate database can be used. So for instance, um, on the assigned call, we know that the call is still active and therefore the call lives in two databases, the cache database as well as the main database. So in order to get the information uh, for, for instance, the first and last diary entries, we're actually only querying the cache database. And that's why uh, when I grab the information here, just get that one, uh, the cache database is used. That's also where the analyst information is stored. So again, that's we're looking at the cache database as opposed to the main database. I hope that answers the question. Great. We'll give it a couple more minutes to see if anyone else has oh, a on. question. It looks like another one has come through. Um, VPME grayed out. Um, main reason would require is to send analyst emails when their call is updated by a customer. And we will need VPME to do this. Um, so the question is whether when a customer updates an email, I suspect via web self-service, um, you would wish an email to go out to notify your analysts that a call has been updated. Um, that can be done with VPME. And it's certainly nicer with VPME than using the uh, messenger because one could use the messenger to do that as well, but the messenger will send out a lot of emails and therefore will be very nice. Um, yes, VPME can be used to um, send out analyst emails, um, uh, an email to analysts in this case. It would be very similar to what you've effectively seen here, um, but then of course when a call is updated. the um, reason you've got VPB grayed out, I can quite clearly and easily state um, that is because you're not licensed to use VPME, which I have to say is a somewhat, um, from what I gather, pricey um, extra endeavor uh, on the license. Um, there was another email coming in, but I somehow don't get a large screen when it comes to emails. or the, I know. I know. I know okay, I've got, I've got it. So, um, my six suit does not look the same as yours. Is that expected? Um, I okay. So there is a few things that we're um, looking at. There is um, Sportworks seven six two. There is of course ITSM, which is on top of that, and. Um, the Sportworks server application itself and thereby the clients should look very similar. Um, if you, the main question is, or the main difference would be visible if you've got ITSM Foundations or ITSM Enterprise. And when you've got ITSM Enterprise, and even with Foundations, you have various versions as well. I'm, what I've showed you here is effectively the latest and greatest. Um, you're probably, probably what you're seeing would be different. So yes, um, the 
items that we have here um, is um, ITSM, uh, I believe, 362 specific, and it runs on Sportwork Service 762. But in this case, the Sportwork Service 762 is a separate um, thing altogether. Um, I hope that answers the question. The next question by Dave is, can you update a business process engine tasks through VPME and advance the process? Yes, you can. Um, there are some caveats though. Uh, the tasks are specific to um, the business process. They are already configured and programmed, so when you start playing around and toying around with them, you effectively need to know what you're doing because um, you're interfering with the normal operation. Um, but yes, you could make some changes. Also, one thing, there is one particular um, form involved with um, BPM, or uh, with the specific tasks within the Business Process Manager that might need tweaking as well, but that really depends on your specific requirements. So um, I hope uh, that answers your question, Dave. Um, Louise, uh, would you be able to run through how you create a simple VPME from scratch? Yes, absolutely certain. Main question, of course, is what I need to um, show. So I'll just create a new process. Um, as you can see, it gives me a few options here, and it's actually quite nice. Uh, thank you, Louise, for um, asking or requesting this. Um, this allows me to show you what call actions can be triggered, or which triggers within Sportworks can be actioned on. And as you can see, all the call actions that you're probably aware of, take a call off hold, place a call on hold, assigning a call, um, can be used. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a defined process, which is um, a used defined process is effectively a standalone item. These are the processes that um, the autoresponders work under, the SLA triggers work under, and also um, anything I would run from the command line. So Use the find process. Um, let's do Hornbill Academy. Uh, I don't like spaces. It is possible to put a space in there, but I prefer not to. So this is where you start off with. There's a start, and as I said, it's going to end um, either in OK or an end fill. I am going to make my, li uh, my life a little bit easy, uh, Louise. I hope you don't mind. I am copying out by doing just sending myself a pop-up. Uh, the analyst I want to send a pop-up to is going to be admin, because I'm currently logged in as admin. And the pop-up subject message is going to be Mobile um, Academy. And add some text. That ampersand square bracket I will come to in a second. Uh, this, as you can see, only uh, this particular block only has one exit, so I'll just end OK and I'll get rid of the end fail, so everything will always work for me. I wish it was that simple, but there we go. Um, I'm just going to add other texts in here. Uh, there we go. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is to show you something else in a little bit later, and because it's a user-defined script, and um, it's also possible to create your own test scripts, um, so it allows me to put information in here. So what we are going to look at is the messenger. Um, ignore these errors, considering, oops, just remove all these. Um, if I save the script and then click on invoke, it allows me to run it, and as you can see, it's request OK. The pop-up happened over here. Yeah, as you can see, there's some text. Now remember that within this area over here, I put in other text as well. If I provide the input parameter um, over here, uh, some more text, and it will ask me to save it, but I click invoke again. Effectively, I get the data filled in. So that's the first one. that we did, which had just some text, and the other one where the data that I provide here gets populated next to that word, that some text. So, and that is effectively a very small 
and uh, VPME scripts. That was done from scratch. Um, I can quite rapidly show you uh, running it from the command line. Oops, bin. Um, SWVPME invoke hyphen DDITSM hyphen S, I hope. So if I run that, it should work. There we go. We've got the third one in. Yeah, and that's the one I wrote just ran from the command line. Um, forgive me if this one doesn't work immediately. I'll just do this. There we go. Yeah, so that's how you can also provide information from the command line. Okay. Um, VPME just cost a few grand. Uh, wait for yourself. You know. <laughs> okay, so that's just a comment from Mark. Um, yeah, VPME is, uh, I dare say, somewhat pricey. It's done for a specific reason. As I said at the very start of this talk, um, VPME allows you to manipulate support works considerably. You can break the system quite easily. Yes, you will not be supportable. You will help you out as much as possible, but there's no support on it, so um, we will help you out as part of consultancy. You can wipe your data with it, so I do have to say that. Yeah, there is a disclaimer here. Um, but on the other hand, if you've got various things that you want to do, support works to do slightly differently here and there, you can now effectively attack it. Um, or have a skilled person go in and do it for you. Um, of course, we're always available, but if you uh, want some training, we can happily will happily provide the training in VPME, and then your programmers can go on the system. Let them work on a test system before putting anything to live. Let me just <laughs> um, iterate that as well. Um, Scott asked a little earlier, could you provide another example of VPME and triggering external resources? Um, I've just um, triggered VPME as if it was an external resource. Um, triggering VPME uh, or using VPME to trigger an external resource, um, I'm af afraid, Scott, it will take me a little bit longer to um, set that up uh, as an example. Uh, but suffice to say, it is possible to um, call a URL. Um, I can at least show you that information. So within the process design, within the system actions, these are all the items that I've effectively summarized for you. Um, so manipulate data. I didn't say sending a pop-up, which I showed you, but launch executable, our HTTP invoke. This allows you to provide a URL which has an endpoint and does something for you, whatever the endpoint is. And provided the endpoint um, returns information in a specific format. The information that the endpoint generates can also be used within the script. So it's not a fire and forget, it's a fire, wait for a response, and possibly use the response. Yeah, but this, um, if you've got control over the endpoints, then at least you can format the response in a particular way as well. So Scott follows that up also with a question. Um, most creative use uh, you've seen with VPME. Hmm, this is me and I've got a bragging rights. Um, within the system there is a user-defined script called, escalate, or called escalation notification. Um, creative use, no, but this is called the monster for a reason. Um, regrettably, um, VPME does allow you to um, break individual pieces off and allow you to effectively like functions or sub-procedures within um, the programming environments. You can um, do that with VPME. However, it wasn't possible in this. So this large chunk of VPME script that you're currently looking at, and that should be enough to scare everyone off, um, is used within the functionality that allows you to send emails to, there's an escalation notification functionality within SupportWorks that allows you to send emails based on specific roles. And that's just to highlight so you know where it is. Um, 
it is part of the service level agreements because you can add the escalation notification a VPME script to um, SLAs. Uh, within that, you have various profiles by default set up. So this will grab the customer of the call. Um, there's some other, the owner of the call, the group manager is being identified, line manager and account manager as well. So those are the ones we provide out of the system. Uh, but that allows you to trigger, oh, hang on, sorry, my apologies. I, I was correct first time around. Um, within the VPME scripts, uh, there's escalation triggers. If you've ever played around with this, you might have noticed, at least in the, since um, Sportworks 7.5, I'm pretty sure, um, invoke VPME scripts. So you can put in escalation notification. I mean, all this is documented in the help menu, of course, um, and the verb would be customer, which is the name of the role we saw just now. You can actually come or separate and put owner. So whenever this escalation happens, um, both the customer as well as the owner will get um, an email. Um, so that is the most elaborate functionality, at least within VPME. Um, some other functionalities I've seen I've worked on are communicating with different systems. So, for instance, um, a third party, instead of sending an email out to a third party, it's directly interacting with the third party's um, service desk or via VPME script. Um, ah, okay, so Dave comes up with happens with um, a modified VPME script following an upgrade. Yes, this is a fun one. It depends what is being upgraded, Dave. Um, as I mentioned a bit earlier on, we have to be very careful um, to recognize that SupportWorks is in three parts. You have the core services, um, which is a solid backend. On top of that is the SupportWorks server, and on top of that is the ITSM Enterprise suite, uh, which is effectively the inter interface. It, the ITSM Enterprise suite could also be the ITSM Foundations, by the way, so that's a um, a smaller version of it, considerably smaller. Um, so the, the core services and support work server, they, are, uh, they can be upgraded independently and any upgrades there won't affect your working in VPME. The upgrade, if you're planning to go from one version of ITSM Enterprise or ITSM Foundations to another, um, that is where things become a little bit more interesting. The VPME scripts in effect will do exactly the same as they previously did if you've modified anything, um, but what you want them to do might be different. Let me just um, highlight that, let me get this one out of the way for you. Uh, remember this assign call email, this is the one that is separate from the one over here. So I've said that's been, this effectively is the user modified one. Yeah, so whenever you modify one of the ones that we provide you with, the modification will be stored in the user section. So there's, there's a system and a user section. The user section contains the modified ones. So this over here is the modified version of the one that was in the system. And so when you upgrade, the system one will, uh, if you upgrade the ITSM Enterprise or Foundations application or even um, IT, uh, the HR desk or the facilities desk, if you were to upgrade those, then the system ones will be overwritten, but the user ones won't. And as long as the user script is still doing what the older version is doing, um, you're fine. However, and this is where the headache starts, and I will admit there are headaches, um, let's say someone added extra functionality in um, the original script, which was um, oh no, wait a second, it was under users, my apologies. Um, this one over here. So someone added an extra block in this area. Yeah, that won't be reflected in your one, and your one is the one that's actually active. So you'd effectively have to go back and compare the two scripts. Is the script, has it actually changed? Yeah, has the original script changed? in which case you'll need to possibly uh, make the modifications from that script and bring them across, or take your modifications, uh, which are in the use defined area, and copy them into the one that we provide, and then it works. Uh, for any of the 
use the defined scripts that are used for um, autoresponder or um, triggered externally, they are. Um, hmm, got some sound. Um, they are used. Um, uh, or they won't, have, of course, be modified because they wouldn't have existed previously. Um, they will continue working. Um, what you would want to do, however, is check that they are still relevant. Specifically, A, maybe the functionality that has been added is currently in the product. Or B, um, you've, lived for, let's say, for instance, created your own um, autoresponder logging script. Maybe the product now somewhat requires a new field to be mandatory. So you would have to go in and make sure that field gets included as well in your original script. So there are things that you need to compare with. And luckily, you probably don't have to redevelop from scratch. Um, but yeah, there are some changes uh, that you probably need to work about. Um, I believe that is then a follow-up. Um, Dave, uh, you do that check on an ITSM change only. Um, Dave, did I answer your question in my, dare say, ramblings? Or um, is this slightly, could it be slightly more specific? Um, effectively, if, oh, hang on, so only IT, yes, correct, Dave, and um, Dave's asking whether only ITSM upgrades affect the VPME, correct. Um, the, if you um, upgrade ITSM, ITSM foundations, enterprise, HR facilities, that could affect um, the working or the, the working of the VPME script. Um, I mean, it won't affect the working of the VPME uh, script, but the VPME script might not be doing what it was uh, what you'd want it to do now, um, given the new functionality that might or might not have been added. Um, okay, I th think we might be running out of questions. Are there there's still some time left for one or two? While we wait for um, a couple more minutes to see if any more do come in, if you do sort of go away um, later on today or tomorrow or a couple of weeks and sort of think of a question, feel free to obviously reach out to me. You should all have my contact details on the communications that's being sent out. But obviously reach out to your relationship manager as well and they can pass that on to Sam and we can follow up with you directly. Um, the recording will be made available hopefully later today on the Support Works YouTube channel and the link will be sent to you. Um, but in the meantime, it doesn't look like we do have any more questions coming through, so I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Sam for taking us through that, um, but also thank you all for attending. We hope you found it useful, and um, we look forward to seeing you on our next Hornbill Academy, which is the 28th of May on the Service Catalogue. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, and goodbye.